This is the Orient Seculum, an age where the power of Europe is eclipsed by that of the Chagatai Empire, stretching from the Baltic all the way to the Pacific. Sardinia is ruled by pretenders. Napoleon II maintains an uneasy control in Sassari as the nation's economic woes continue to plague the ancient empire. A man of unquestioning greed, Napoleon's private expenses have cost the treasury and legitimacy of his rule greatly. Yet the monarch makes up for it with a diplomatic brilliance which is changing the nature of what Sardinia is seen as by all. Many of the emperor's advisors beg him to rebuild the outdated and poorly supplied military and navy which put him on the throne in the first place, but it falls on deaf ears. With many of the world's great powers having struggled to deal with a great crash at 35, war and imperial expansion have not been great in this era, but that is about to come to an end. If Napoleon cannot get his house in order, another may soon seek to take its place. This is the second part of a roleplay grand campaign in Victoria 3, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. We are one of the major powers in Europe yet again, but not a great one by any means. Our foreign policy has resulted in a number of dramatic changes. Specifically, we now have alliance, uh, defensive alliances with Cuba. We have built a defensive agreement also with Ferrara in the north of Italy as a buffer zone to the north. With Somalia in Eastern Africa, who actually originally approached us, as well as with the Miwar, one of the very powerful princedoms in India giving us a leg into diplomacy in the region as well as a strong ally in what is now modern-day Yaipur and then the Bengal region, modern-day Bangladesh. Besides that, we have rivalries with the Bosnians, with Byzantium, with Castalla, with Lithuania, and with the Netherlands, all of which are very hostile to us. In terms of our government, who is in power, we currently have the aristocrats in charge, as well as the conservatives backing up Napoleon II, who are very loyal to him as they share many policies. And very hostile to us of are, of course, the radical liberals and the liberals. Until the Admiralty is built, we're going to be in a bit of a rough economic shape here, but that's fine. This is a very needed step in order to rebuild the quality of our Admiralty and our Navy that once existed and was lost during the post-Napoleonic period. Some naval officers are worried that the new Admiralty will reduce their autonomy and the control they have over their own units. Too bad. Diplomatically, we're still just working generally on trying to rebuild some relations in Europe. We're trying to reduce the hatred the Byzantines had for us because they're very dangerous right now. And trying to obviously reinforce some relations with a few others. We have we have good opinions with the Gizrids, actually. Admiralty was completed. Wonderful. I think it's a building. Work on increasing our professionalism in our Navy. Start a training program. It's expensive, but we can afford it. Napoleon II has received an ambassador from a Bavarian delegation with a very unexpected letter addressed from President Stefan Edel wishing to enter into a defensive agreement with us. I mean, despite being very radical, they do have conservatives in their government. They are more conservatives, but they're still so radical. I mean, they're working on universal suffrage right now. We can't work with such radicals. It's not going to happen. They're, uh, they're of good use to us as a trading partner. But we can't be seen to working with them. It would it would put a screw in all the other diplomacy we've been doing underneath Napoleon II, so no. So obviously, the armed forces in the Navy are very interested in a war with the Papal States in order to secure the last of Southern Italy, as well as their company in Western uh, North Africa. However, until we get the military rebuilt, we can't do that. And before we get the military rebuilt, we need to pay off this debt, which is looking to be pretty difficult for us here. The uh, Shagatai are buying a ton of our iron. God damn it. Let's put some tariffs on it then, at least. If they're going to keep the route, we're at least going to make more money off of them. They need the iron so bad they're going to pay for the tariffs. I was trying to figure out where are all our iron's going. The Shagatai are buying all of it, which we really don't want. We don't want to be exporting cheap goods like that. But we have a trade agreement with them, and we need it to buy all their cheap goods. Folks, I think we're getting conned by the Shagatai here. I'm going to be honest. Da -da -ha! It's not profitable. Our industrial minister has signed a special act into place to protect uh, exports away of scarce materials, resulting in Chagatai's traders having to pay enormous costs. So his main goals, Napoleon's main goals, is just diplomacy and corruption, essentially, right? So we're working on developing good relations and growing the economy. This is a very, very stagnant period for us. Work on some more relations improvements. We have no desire to hate the French, but we can't improve relations with them. We'll work on the Castellans. Send an ambassador to Scandinavia. 
We're going to go ahead and start trying to pass protectionism. Currently in our government, there would probably be a pretty big deal between like the traders and like the, the government. Because the government underneath deploying the second is obviously wanting to have a policy of good relations through diplomacy. So we're trying to develop good relations with countries through trade agreements and things like that, including the one with the Shaga type, as well as export policies that aren't dependent on it. Whereas the traders are losing a fortune trying to manufacture when all their cheap goods are going to, to Asia right now. So yes, we are, we are kind of going bankrupt at the moment. The monarchy just got overthrown in Britain. Presidential Republic and an oligarchy. So the House of Commons completely took power in Britain. They got rid of the, the king. Probably a little bit too much influence from the Bavarians, I would say. Man, monarchs are dropping like flies in Europe, aren't they? President Cornelius Allenby took power. He's a charismatic merchant. Part of the bureaucracy of uh, London. He's loved. At least the fecal monster's still in power. Look at that jawline. The, the, current, uh, the current emperor of America is abolitionist. Are we going to see a civil war in this timeline between like the Emperor of America and like the Southern Plantation owners? The most prominent members of Camponius High Society have been organizing luxurious parties in the new and lavish urban buildings. I mean, we'd approve of that. We should have enough music. We have two opera halls. No, it's not enough. We'll need to build more, more music halls, I guess. We have a lot of rich people. We also don't have enough fine art buildings. We have had an ambassador in Cairo since the end of the war with the Egyptians, and I guess they've actually are no longer outright hostile to us. They've asked for a trade agreement. The question is, is that worth it to us, though? Because tariffs are actually of use to us, and we're not pro-free trade yet. It's only 46. No, I'm going to deny that. Our, our traders wouldn't get anything good out of it. Yeah, they're, they're actually on very good relations to us, despite the fact that we took the Suez Canal from them in EU4, which they blew up. Right, the iron mines have done so much to help our economy. We now have a surplus such that we can export to the Shagatai and meet our own demands too. An influential faction within the professional interest has grown frustrated with their co-members' neutrality on the topic of protectionism. Themselves in favor of the law, they have now resolved to form a separate political faction intended on passing it. As long as we pass it, that's fine. I have a feeling that Ployan II is probably going to go down as one of our, our worst leaders in history. He's overseen a pretty incredibly stagnant, incompetent era here. My god. From pragmatically inclined members of the business interests currently opposed to the passing of protectionism have offered to change the stance such that they will be offered certain political concessions. Such concessions could be popular with the aristocratic interest. They are in our government and they are who are running our country essentially right now. So we obviously want to work with them, even though this is borderline corruption. Compromise is a tool of the week. We'll slow down adaption for protectionism, but we're going to keep working with our current ruling interests. All right, we are actually getting out of our depths of debt now. We are under 2 million once more, and we have a very solid surplus. We have built the actual foundation we need to sustain our exports, our trade, and our industry. We're finally looking pretty good here. When we are out of deficit on our debt, we're going to go ahead and build up our war industries once more to produce what we need. We're going to rebuild our navy, we're going to rebuild our military, and we're going to start to work towards colonial wars in the east once more. Napoleon II is getting older. He's in his mid-20s now. He'd definitely be uh, realizing he's got a long way to do go to reach even a fraction of the reputation of his father, so we have a lot to go. The business interests have started complaining about the existence of subsistence farmers in Corso, Sardinia, and Romania. Stating that their undeniable inefficiency should be immediately addressed. We will work with them on that. We got protectionism too. Good. Let's go ahead and up our export tariffs on iron. It won't affect the Chagatai's trade route though, because trade routes mean that there are no export tariffs or import tariffs, but no, we're good. It's a very high tariff rate of 30%, so no one will be trading that unless they absolutely have to, or they have a trade agreement with us, like the Chagatai do. Keepin' Fuglemont just died. The Emperor of the U.S. has died. I'm sure we'd probably be invited to the state funeral in, uh... Hold on, where's their capital again? In Augusta, Maine. The capital of the United States in this timeline. Seven years old. He's Franco-Canadian, not French. Look at that. Look at the men they could bring the bear. We won't be able to contend them to Hoi 4 until I can micromanage tank divisions, folks. I'm gonna be honest. And even then, it will be rough. We will. The diplomacy of Napoleon is really is really making this game wild, I have to say. Somalia wants to join our customs union. We'd really need to build up our navy if we're gonna accept this. We'd have to we have to militarize early. This could be a big danger for us. We're gonna accept though. So our customs union now contains Cuba, the company in Asia, and Somalia. 
And it's going to make it pretty wild here for a second, I bet. Let's look. Scandinavia joined the French market. Rule play wise, we're going to go with basically the king of Scandinavia, the, the queens of France and Castalla, essentially forged an economic and military pact together. So it probably to offset Bavaria. At first, that doesn't seem pretty extreme, but you have to remember all three of them are existentially threatened by Bavaria. So this would probably be just to outcompete the Bavarians militarily and economically. We need to upgrade our institutional education. That's what we need to do. We have canneries. Let's work now on mechanized workshops to actually get a textile industry going a bit more. Oh, check it out that war. Who are they fighting? Oh, yeah, they're going to subjugate Borneo. It's found an observatory. We haven't done that as well. We actually have a surplus right now. The foundation stood of our new observatory is about to be laid. Construction work can begin soon. And let's increase our professionalism as well. Five months of naval exercises. It's going to cost us a small fortune, but that's fine. Before the fleet review starts, we need to decide how much we're willing to spend. Yes. We could use the fleet review as an opportunity to pay homage to a special guest. Who should we choose? We're going to invite uh, the ambassador of the U.S. to oversee our fleet, since they are now allies of ours. The fleet review is over, and overall the result can be considered good. The king watched as the last few ships sailed by. He was pleased with the result. It was not the most spectacular display in the world, but it showed the Royal Carcer Sardinian Navy was a capable fighting force. All right. We had that period of peace, right? That's done. Everyone's moving now. The wars are just going crazy out of nowhere. Um, yeah, America's going to win that. Their military is way bigger. That's sad because in this timeline, Mexico is super, super democratic. The monarchist bloc is getting very powerful. They've got America into it, too. So, yeah, it now be Scandinavia, France, Castella, and America are basically in a, in a pseudo faction right now, essentially. They're knocking out one of the radicals in the New World. Potential ally of Bavaria, really. And America has won. America has invaded and taken the Yucatan, Chiapas, Guatemala, and El, uh, San Salvador from Mexico. Imperialist monarchy. Emperor Theodore at age nine... We've got some military shortcomings we need to deal with too. Let's work on field works. Then we're going to work on repeaters and breach loading artillery so we can actually keep up militarily, given we're kind of being outpaced here by a lot of folks. At 28 years of age, after having ruled for quite some time, Napoleon II is undergoing a dramatic overhaul of the military. So yeah, he's working with uh, members of the armed forces and the officer corps to re rebuild our military for the first time since the execution of Napoleon the First Army outside the pyramids of Cairo. A great composer stopped in our country on our current tour and his tour and tour and decided to stay for a while. Alongside Yoshini Rosini, Valenzo Bellini, and Giuseppe Verdi, Gitano Donizzi, saying all these wrong, is considered the most important Italian composer in the 19th century. With around 70 operas, he achieved great fame throughout Europe during his lifetime and was described as a master of bel canto. Born in Bergamo, he first celebrated his great successes in Italy until he looked elsewhere for more favorable conditions for his work due to increasing censorship. Before Donizetti, uh, comic operas in particular had enjoyed great success. With Donizetti, the Geschmack changed again in the direction of opera seria. Donets, uh, Donizetti's operatic output is extraordinarily diverse and ranges stylistically from a late classical idiom to his early work which still shows influences of Simon Mayer and Rossini, to the high romanticism on the threshold of Verdi to whom Donizetti owes a lot. No, we can't afford that quite yet. We'll, uh, we'll let him obviously perform in our opera hall. We've got two of them in Cesare now. A traveling composer got along with his fellow musicians on site straight away. The relationship between foreign and resident musicians has not always been easy. It wasn't just national resentment and personal prejudice. Some orchestras could not work with the conducting style of a great conductor. Sometimes the short nature of performances required compromises for which the guests in turn blame the local music world. Many local composer or conductor also feel the influence of foreigners would be too great. However, despite all the obstacles, friendships continued to grow. On the day of the premiere, a large crowd had gathered expectantly in front of the Opera House, which had been sold out for days. Even the composer who appeared could only get a ticket to the black market. However, since the theater employee had sold additional tickets himself, tickets sold far exceeding the number of seats. There were tumultuous scenes in and in front of the theater in which the music was almost completely lost. Those outside yelled to be let in. Those inside cried out for quiet. The opening choruses could still be performed. But when the orchestra gave up, which was when the racket really started. Who is responsible for this? Oh boy, we double sold tickets to the uh, 
He immediately left after that, too. After some time with Stay, a great composer decided to leave. God damn it, we couldn't keep him. I'd be pretty pissed, too, if, like, you know, the, the Opera Hall is performing at double sold tickets and ruined my performance. I don't blame him, honestly. We have been asked to join the Customs Union of Bavaria. We are unequivocally going to say no. We're trying to keep good relations with these countries without becoming, obviously, subservient to them. Then Bavaria aren't actually hostile, nor is for, uh, Bavaria and Britain. Bavaria is only hostile with uh, Scandinavia, Castella, and Byzantium. That's interesting. And Shagatai, too. To be fair, Bavaria did literally fight against a revolutionary government in Byzantium where they briefly went, like, uh, revolutionary. So, there's a lot of mutual hatred there, isn't there? We could reconcile with Japan if we want to play a very risky game here. The British declared war on the Japanese Empire to take a treaty port in Kanto and to take uh, Chugoku. Japan has hated us since the Civil War, and he, they do currently hold on to Solomon, one of the Torah's heirs. But obviously, we aren't really looking to be hostile to them. So we've put in a lot of work to reconcile, which has paid off. We could enter this war to fight the British, but we also have to fight the British. And that would put, obviously, some danger on us. But we're militarizing for a reason. This is a good way to get back in the game and secure potentially a strong ally. And we are going to be intervening. Here we go. <laughs> we have 13 battalions and 24 flotillas. They're strong. And then there's Sardinian army strong. Increase our professionalism. I don't care the cost. We're going to need to hire a new general in Italy then. Wounded. Syphilis. The fuck is our general staff? An arrogant syphilis ridden opium addict. A, a wounded veteran. And a deceitful politician. What the hell is our general staff come to? This is embarrassing. I'm going to hire you just so I can fire you. Just, just, just to fire you. I know I'm going to piss some people off. But that's too fucking bad. And a radical liberal who's actually competent, of course. All right, we're going to go Nicola Tefuri. He may be wounded, but he's not incompetent. Which is more than can be said for everyone else. All right, our admiral is actually competent. I'm going to promote him. The Shagatai are going to declare the neutrality, by the way. We're in this alone with the with the Japanese. The first war of Victoria III against the British Republic, no less. Under the control of Fer uh, Fergus O'Connor. Actually, hold up. I'll see what you're made of, son. We're sending the fleet to Asia. Napoleon will defend the whole miles. The Japanese are surrounded, but they're winning. Oh, yeah. Get him, boys. General Shinsaku Shibiyama. Experienced defensive strategist, offensive planner, raffle, and cautious. He is a very good general. What are the British got? General Lopez, he is arbitrary and well traveled. We're building the last of our naval bases. We'll wait until we build a couple more steamships, then I'm going to hit them in the Strait of Gibraltar. We've got a long history with the Brits there. We should be knocking out their supply lines as well. Yep, we are. Good. That's why I have them in the Java Sea, by the way, folks. Although we don't know yet if Napoleon II is a competent commander, with a father like Napoleon I, he'd definitely want to prove himself and do something like he father, his father did in the U4, so... Oh, hello. Japanese Navy in the English Channel. Off the coast of Brittany. The British are navally invading, though. Yeah, Britain lost uh, Shikoku, their treaty port. And they're trying to naval invade again, but they're getting pushed back. The Japanese are navally invading Britain. They are getting slaughtered on the landing in southern England. But, oh my god, they actually tried. Holy shit. He just lost like 50,000 men in that assault. He was almost shot, but thankfully it uh, deflected off his uh, his giant steel balls with a radius of five feet. So he's fine. He survived the landing. They got slaughtered, though. He went in with 100,000 men, by the way. The change in large-scale production from smoothbore muskets to rifles in the arms industry in Tuscany has ushered in a new era for small arms production in Sardinia. Beautiful. Still towards repeaters. They white-pieced it. 
Uh, we didn't get a chance to use our navy. We raided a bunch of British ships, allowing them to win the war in Japan, after which the Japanese emperor put an entire army of 100,000 men onto his fleet and navally invaded southern England. After losing 50,000, they entered into peace negotiations at White Beast. So they've got a new president, too. Henry Newdigate. Look at his eyes. He was there in the landing. You can tell. Look at those eyes. You know for a fact he was a survival. But we have a navy now, at least. We can get into the colonial business again. Emperor Napoleon II, after watching from the sidelines as his Japanese allies won the war, more or less, is now going to be preparing for some colonialism. The Pasai are first on our list. I've got a lot of vassals. It is time. We're back in the colonial game, folks. Been far too long. So replay, like, replay wise, what this would have been is our government basically preparing for war with the Pasai, the Shagatai intervening and threatening to go onto the side of our enemies and us brokering a deal with them to essentially split Northern Sumatra. So they'll become the overlord of the Pasai and we'll take land in Akka and in uh, Northern, Northern Sumatra is the deal. Alrighty. Napoleon will get his, his day here. Well, he's not incompetent, but he is decking on a bunch of, like, random tribes in Indonesia. So that's... He's a political operator. Nice. He has a neck for politics. He's getting better. He is improving across the board. Maybe he'll turn out to be not a complete Napoleon III here. That'd be nice. A very quick war. We secured broad swaths of territory in the north for the company in Akka and in uh, northern Sumatra. The radical liberals are getting revolutionary about public schooling. Oh, this is getting to be an issue. We can't bend to the will of these radical leftists. There's no way. This is this is not the revolutionary republic that existed under Napoleon I. General Corradino Palmieri noted several unrests in southern Sumatra has pro uh, proposed using the army to suppress agitation. While his political allies support him, there's a heavy risk to following his plan. Fire! Dissidents in Karsa Sardinia's Eastern Sahara have announced plans for a major march around government offices in the near future. While they profess peaceful intentions and claim everyone will be unharmed, the march itself will obviously serve as a rallying point for those unhappy with the government. Stop that march! Absolutely not. We're not going to give concessions either. Napoleon II is a very, I think, in my mind, a very insecure, corrupt man. And he knows if he starts to give concessions, he'll have nothing. Look how badly he's balding too, Jesus Christ. So, we're gonna go all in here. One of the king's trusted ministers, Benedetto di Renzi, has been abducted by rebels and spirited away to a hidden location. The rebels have declared that di Renzi will be executed if the government does not offer them a ransom. See? Also in the army. A minor member of the Carcer Sardinian nobility has been assassinated by revolutionary forces in his estate in Malta. The surviving members of his family are demanding reprisals. Too bad. Opportunistic members of the professional interest that defected to the agrarian populist cause. That's a revolution, by the way. The professional interests are a huge portion of our political power. We don't need them. We have the military. It seems that the bureaucratic interests are determined to extract concessions from the government during the moment of crisis. And we refuse to bend. They threaten to throw in their lot with a revolution. As I said, mass arrests. We're going to imprison all of them. Even if they run their con our country. Imprison all of them. A significant amount of money was stolen and redirected into revolutionary coffers. Increased security around banks. 